The only thing we could probably salvage off this hood is these little emblems right here. I won't be able to save this ignition box. And it didn't even damage these headlights. Maybe this is what caught fire. Look, there's, there was a whole paper towel right here leaning right against the headers. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be back to work on our 1965 Ford Mustang. And I will hope you guys all had a happy new year because I did. This year is going to be full of blessings. Just like this Mustang was an absolute steal of a deal. We figured that out in the last video when we took everything out and we realized the floor pans are actually the original floor pans from the 65 Mustang. So in today's video, I want to go ahead and start like diving into the front end of this car because pretty much from here back, everything is perfect in the car. There's nothing we need to do here for now. This is all just gonna be bodywork and then paint. So today is gonna be more focused on the front end of this car. And a lot of people were actually saying in the comments that this was probably done by the firefighters, which I think it was because the only damage on this car was right here. And I'm guessing when it was ablaze, they had to break the hood open because that's where the main fire was going. Probably all the gas was coming, just shooting out of the, the carburetor or something like that. So they had to yank this thing open, which it doesn't really matter, but I kind of, Kind of sucks that they did damage all this. And they did the same thing on my McLaren 720S. Uh, one of the firefighters actually reached out to me and he said they had the jaws of life on that car. And he's also a car guy and it kind of hurt him. And I bet whoever was cutting this thing apart probably hurt them too. But it's all good. You know, we'll find new new grill. We'll find this piece new. At least the Mustang emblem survived. We can probably pop this in the office somewhere. Just hang it up. It's a cool little, cool little piece right there. But basically, I want to start taking this thing all apart in the front and see how bad the fire damage actually is. Before we jump into the Mustang, I want to give a big shout out to Tech they actually sent us a toolbox and a couple of tools but unfortunately one of the boxes was a little delayed so we can't set up the toolbox just yet so we'll probably have to do it in the next episode but let's get started on the Mustang so the first thing I want to do on this Mustang is go ahead and pop this hood off because it's really hard to open and it's really blocking a lot of everything that's going on down there so let's grab our tools and get this thing off Open this hood. So you can break it with this thing too. Pile. Dude, this hood is freaking trash, but we have the only thing we could probably salvage off this hood is these little emblems right here on the front. I was thinking about pulling the stripes off, but they're a little too far gone. Let's continue with the Mustang. So we just popped the hood off this car and it's already looking a little bit better, you know. Now we get to see exactly what's going on with this patch right here. Dang, so they did just weld it in. That's kind of a big gap right there. I just want to kind of know who did that right there. And then looking into here, hey, there's no rust. Everything seems solid. But I'm starting to think we might actually need a firewall for this car. And we are definitely replacing this towel section because I actually do have it from that car over there. I'll show you guys that in a little bit. But let's continue on. I'm gonna go grab the trash can. We're gonna start cleaning up some of this stuff. We gotta get this battery out of here because it probably, maybe it has a little bit of acid still in it. So let's go ahead and start cleaning up this whole entire engine bay, get all the debris out, just so we don't make a huge mess when we're taking stuff off. Let's go ahead and try to get this out of this grime out of here. Oh, this is actually copper wire. We can probably scrap this for a little bit of money. I wonder if Elon Musk can fix his battery though. It used to be a battery. We'll probably just go ahead and sell it to Chuck. Man, it burned everything up here. Hey, this is a new new tray right here from the battery. Got all the ignition stuff. And I actually got a guy that bought my other Mustang motor. He actually wants to buy this motor right here. But I'm just not sure what kind of motor this is. So once we start taking more stuff off, we can probably find out. I think it's a 289. That's what people were saying because I did say 305. 
but these cars only came with the 289 unless this is just some kind of custom one because it does look a little bit weird if anybody out there knows what kind of motor it is just go ahead and drop it in the comment section and hope we can get this thing so what is this look there's a whole bad maybe hold up oh, that's a paper towel dude maybe this is what caught fire look there's, there was a whole paper towel right here leaning right against the headers wait are you telling me this might be an insurance i don't think insurance maybe so wait that is kind of weird there's paper towels right here sitting perfectly on the headers so as it's if, not fully on fire though. yeah but it, see it caught on fire like that and then it just burned up this is getting a little sketchy so maybe it was insurance fraud but man that is weird why would there be paper towels in here i don't think anybody would just keep paper towels laying right here on the header unless this guy who had this car was cleaning his car but with these kind of towels look it's not fully burnt though no it's not look you can tell it was pressed up against the headers like perfectly Dude, kind of looks like insurance fraud but who knows we're not going to expose nobody here Innocent until proven guilty. <laughs> that is kind of weird though who puts a paper, a full paper towel and those aren't even like those aren't even like the shop towels like the nice ones that you would use that's like paper towels those things like really nice and dry like meant to catch on fire so that is kind of sketchy Maybe, maybe this motor is bad. Maybe the motor was going out or something. And they just decided to torch this bad boy. I mean, dude. And a, and a lot of people were telling me earlier that this is not a factory car because of the four lug, uh, the four lug uh, spindles. So this is a factory six cylinder car, which kind of sucks. And now I can kind of see because the headers are bashed in. Right there, there's, the headers are a little bit bashed in, so I'm wondering, maybe he just didn't have enough power in this bad boy and he was kind of mad. But let's continue on with this. Well, it's kind of the fact that the paper towels were laying right up on the headers and the imprint was still in there. So... I, I could kind of see that, that being not like you were wiping something down, but who uses those kind of towels to wipe the car down? You think he just accidentally placed them in there and forgot about it? And drove off with it? I don't know. That's Wait, that that's a hard area. There would be no reason to put yeah. paper towels right. I could see right here, right here, but back there, like you can't even get in there by lifting the hood. The hood comes up right here, so it's like we couldn't even see that. It was hidden down there. So who knows? Guys, I'm not saying that it was insurance fraud, but it does look pretty sketchy. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section about those paper towels being placed right there on the headers, perfectly meant to catch on fire. <laughs> Let's continue on. Surely we won't be able to save this ignition box. <sighs> that sucks to see everything go to a fire, but it's all good because we are going to rebuild this bad boy better than factory. This thing's built for tough. It shouldn't have burned like this. Hopefully, we don't catch on fire again. Is it cool? Oh. Well, that's one thing we need. We need to grab. Uh, a drain. I did not know that it was going to be full. I thought it would melt it or something, but oh, it is a fully metal radiator. I forgot this thing wasn't made in halfway in China. Well, we'll have to clean all that up later. All right guys, so we got a lot of stuff out of the Mustang. We took the battery off, we got the entire radiator off and this front uh, grill section with the headlights. 
And man, it's, I'm pretty sure this front end is all OEM. Uh, the, all the spot welds are actually still in the front radiator support. So either it was replaced at one time or it's just a factory car. And I did notice that it does have these uh, shut bars right here, which did not come. They only come on the V8, which this isn't a V8. So I'm guessing somebody welded it in, them in. But man, it's looking good. I'm, I'm happy to see that there's no rust anywhere on the car, like especially right here in this area, because sometimes the battery leaks and they rust through. But really, this is all just from it burning and it just sitting for a couple of months. And man, we do need a vacuum cleaner ASAP. So now let's dive deeper into the car. I want to get this front bumper off and then probably take this panel off right here. Kind of sucks they did damage this right here. I'm pretty sure that was just from the firefighters. They had their big pry tools, so they damaged this piece, but it's not really too bad down here. So I think we'll be able to save that. So let's go ahead and dive into it and get this front bumper off also. The number one thing we actually need to do once we go do another Harbor Freight run is a creeper because we, we don't have anything and everything is ice cold right now. So let's go ahead and get this front bumper off. Should be easy to take off. All the bolts are literally coming off with ease. I don't think there's any rust on them. I think it's like a 16. I'm gonna have to just lay on this for now. Dude, it is so clean under here. Oh my God. That was the easiest bumper I've ever removed. It's crazy, every bolt is literally in perfect condition. Did not need any spray or anything. Hold on, let's, let's see what this bumper says. Triple nickel plating. This could be an OEM bumper that was remanufactured. So it does have five years warranty. So this possibly could be the original bumper. They just re nickel plated it, because it looks in perfect condition. I think I actually have my other bumper. I want to compare it. I got a brand new re reproduction bumper. I want to compare it to this thing, see how the difference is. So we got the front bumper off and man, I am impressed. Everything is coming off so easy. I don't even need, I don't even need to use any WD-40. Now I want to get this uh, piece off right here. This is like, I guess it's, it's the little bumper behind the bumper. So go ahead and pop this off too. front end basically all apart on this cart and when I tell you this thing is literally in perfect condition I am not lying most of the bolts on here I literally just unscrewed with the machine and just my hand behind it so that means this car was a full frame off restoration everything down here looks perfect I'm, this is has to be a factory front radiator support because all the spot welds are here everything looks freaking perfect if it was restored or like if it was fixed before then they did a super stunner oem job on it and man let me tell you if this was just a front end damage accident this car would be an absolute deal but honestly i would rather deal with a little bit of fire damage like this right here rather than like replacing whole quarter panels or replacing the whole floor pan because that's just like getting into the structure of the body but dude this car is turning out so freaking good and we were looking a little bit closer down here and i'm thinking maybe it would be a better option to replace the firewall too and i do have a couple of parts from that old fastback mustang that we could potentially use over here let's go check out what we have so outside if you guys remember this old tool bench right here it's actually working pretty good for a parts uh, store for now uh here is the old cowl well this is the new cowl i bought for the fastback mustang it does have a little bit of surface rust because it was just uh primed with weld through primer but I think a little bit of rust remover on this thing, maybe even sandblast it a little bit and it'll be good to go. And then here is the inner piece. And on these Mustangs, usually this is what rots out first. Once water gets in the cowl, it rots all this stuff out right here. So a lot of people actually replace them on perfectly good looking Mustangs. And I'm glad we have it. I think this is a little bit bent right here. Let's take it inside and get a better look at it. Here's the cowl piece right here. And I wonder if this will fit. This is off a 66 Fastback. I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same thing. Let's just line it up over here and see. 
Yeah, it looks like it's exactly the same. And I think it will, yeah, it has all the same clips that this one has. I think this thing will work for her because I'm pretty sure on that car right here, everything is the same from like here forward. I don't see why they would change it. Even the doors are the same on the Fastback Mustangs to the regular. But man, this thing looks so cool just chilling right here next to a coupe. And it's pretty cool that I have both. I have a Fastback and a coupe, which is pretty much everybody's dream to have both cars at once. And then here is the lower cowl right here. So I'm guessing you do have to pretty much take off the top one. And after you take off the top one, you can get to that bottom piece right there. I'm just not too sure on how to remove this dashboard because I do know that they are welded in. So hopefully it's not too hard. Let's do it. Let's take a little look inside. But as, ooh, that's kind of weird. When we took the front end off, took the front end apart, I guess it relieved a little bit of tension because it was hit right there. So maybe we'll need a little bit of framework on this car. But let's go ahead and see inside. See, I'm guessing they're welded in right here, right here and somewhere in the back. So I'm not too sure. I will definitely have to do some research on how to remove this dashboard because it's gonna need to be sandblasted and all repainted because you don't want it rusting from the back. Like we could probably just grind all this down from the front, make it look good. But if it's rusting from the back, we do not want that. You guys, I'm having so much fun ripping this car down, but honestly, I cannot wait to start actually cutting and welding in the new pieces, get all that back to factory OEM. And we are gonna have to cut these uh, firewall, or not the firewall, the shut towers out right here. As you can see, this uh, stock, or this is a 289, so this is a tiny engine and it barely fits in here because you can tell, or on that side, you can see that the headers are actually bashed in. So we'll definitely have to remove these sh uh, shock towers right here. And what that's gonna give us is a cool over suspension, which is gonna be way better for handling and performance versus this uh, big old spring in here. And a lot of people are wondering how the suspension heat uh, held up to all the heat. And I'm pretty sure it melted the springs and it lowered the front down pretty good because you can tell right here, like even this bushing is just completely gone. And I'm guessing that's why the car is sitting like at an incline down. But honestly, this thing is a lot better than we ever expected and it's coming along nicely. I can't wait to rip this engine out right here, start replacing the new pieces and getting this thing on the road as fast as possible. And I was reaching out to a lot of companies like for engine management and stuff. And a lot of people are, they're, they're, a lot of their stuff is on back order or delayed because of all the stuff that's been going on in the world. But I'm honestly thinking maybe we'll use a Ford factory wiring harness, maybe just trim it down. Because I know there's a company called Cleveland Power and Performance and they actually sell engines on a crate that are turnkey, you just start them up. So it's doable. I'm guessing all you have to do is buy like the OEM factory harness and which I might actually still have the factory OEM harness from the old car, the red car that I used to have. I think it was like two years ago or something like that. But if anything, if worse comes to worse, we'll just buy another 5.0 sell my 5.0 and buy another 5.0 for literally the same, buy an entire car for literally the same price. They go for like three to four, five grand, depending on how hard they're smashed. And we really just need the engine and the transmission. And I really want to go with an automatic. I don't really want a manual in this thing, but I guess we'll see. Because I kind of I kind of love the eight speed automatics. They look freaking cool. And guys, I also think buying a wrecked Mustang would probably be the fastest route because we don't want to be waiting on parts because then we won't be able to make any videos. But we do, I want to tell you guys about the roof. A lot, of, a lot of people in the comment section were wondering what's going on with the roof. And let me show you. I'm guessing the heat just warped. You can't really see it. I guess you probably can't really see it that much on camera. But this entire section right here is just bowed in really bad see this right here is that bar that goes inside and i guess that thing just heated up cherry hot and it shrunk the whole roof so i think we're just going to replace the whole thing because i honestly don't want to be doing any body filler on the roof because you know this thing has not much body filler anywhere and i want to just make it as nice as possible i don't want to have like loads of Bondo on there. Hey guys, that's gonna be a wrap for today's video. We got a lot of work done on the car. We pretty much took off the entire front end, got everything stripped down. Now we know exactly everything that we need to go ahead and order, go ahead and replace, which is pretty much everything in the front because it's all burned out. But we did look out because we already have this front cowl section and we can go ahead and probably in the next video, I wanna replace, I wanna take the engine out and then we can go ahead and start grinding, maybe even pull this cowl off, pull the under cowl off, start replacing all that. Maybe we might need a, a firewall, we'll see, because it probably got ruined by all the heat, but we'll have to just wait and see. But if you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, drop a like on Instagram at VTune. Thanks for watching.